Hi everyone. Welcome to our second day of the Love Quest for October 2017. As we did on the first day, this will be read as well as um, ad-libbed. Uh, it's not rehearsed, so please bear with me. As promised, we will talk about where to look for the evidence of love. I'll give you a hint. It's everywhere. But you see, these can feel a bit obscure. Not many of us were told about these things. Even if we discovered them on our own, well, we weren't able to identify them correctly. We may have even ignored them. There are a few things to keep in mind. First, you do not just exist inside your head or at your current location. Second, when you have a feeling about something and then see it played out, this too is you. Third, the stories, people, activities, and shows and programs you are drawn to are also you. There is a habit you might want to take on to prove this to yourself. Each time some portion of love shows up, take note. We have smartphones now that provide memo options where you can list things you want to remember. I also carry a small notepad in my purse and my car as well for this. These bits of love, once amplified in our life, will eventually become all that you see. Try it. You'll see what I mean. It's sort of like a dream journal, but instead it's a love journal. I'll share a few of my own before we go on. Yesterday I saw a fairy. I was outside and looking down when it flew very close to my forehead. I looked up then and followed it zigzag as if making a geometric pattern and then fly off into the yard. This has happened twice before. Once I was with my partner. It was at dusk and there were tiny lights as they flew by us. Another time I saw a small being in my closet was standing on a shoebox. I believe these life forms are visible to us when we are in a state of love, a state of allowing. I felt honored each and every time it happened. When love shows up, it is felt inside. It appears for me often when I look at trees, at humanity, small animals, flowers. I received a free coffee once at Starbucks. That was love. I see it also in this week's reaction to what happened in Las Vegas. So many of us were not cowering in fear after this event, but instead finding and sharing truths about what happened. I've heard, but not seen, that during the event some people, while they were ducking, were also shouting and giving the finger to whoever was shooting. These reactions all spring from a knowing of our value. Love is our core essence. It is not to be messed with. We know who we are. These current outpourings of both love and, quote, not love, stand out loud as evidence. It's like you can't see how white white is until you put it against something dark. What you are will not be denied. What is clear once you know where to look, is that love emerges often 
without announcement or expectation. Think about that. There is only one place it can emerge from. That place is within you. The evidence for love is remembered as a feeling of bliss. Bliss is not the same emotion as contentment or satisfaction or even ecstasy. Bliss reaches beyond fulfillment of an expectation and offers us a place beyond this third dimensional world we inhabit right now. Bliss surprises us because it doesn't answer a question. It offers a gateway. Bliss leads us out of ourselves. Bliss could only be possible if there truly was some place beyond our third dimensional self. There is not just one place beyond, but many. Love stands as evidence for our multidimensionality. It shows up from ourselves in ways and moments unplanned. This is because like every other solid earthly habit we've adopted, planning roots us while allowing sprouts our wings. Now to be fair, all of us plan, but this is not a discussion about getting through your week. This is a spotlight on love. To be fair, let's leave all blame and regret behind. These emotions are clearly not love. Actually, any emotion that beats you up is unnecessary and absolutely not love. We've entered a time on earth where we can see polarity battling it out. If you were wondering just when the end of times was going to begin, you can stop it now. It's here. This is not the end of life, but the end of times as you know them to be. I don't know about you, but I'll only be too willing to end much of what I see played out on the current world stage. There's a way you can do that, and it has nothing to do with where you are or what you do for a living. The way you can do that is to accept that you are affecting all that you see and all that you don't see. Notice, trust, remember. Remember what it is you want to see more of. Frequent places that do the sorts of things you want around. Hang with the people you feel really good with. Recognize love. It's that laughter inside of your gut. It's an exclamation. It's surprising in its ferocity. It's astounding in its reach. It's limitless. We began this quest with an idea that love is necessary. Here's why. Right now, our planet is taking us with her as she moves into a new frequency. In this place, there are things like fairies, bliss, and unconditional love. There is no question as to whether or not we'll get there. The only question is when. When will we realize that we are already there? Love is realized in the recognition of bliss the sight of a fairy, the strength of inner conviction, the unexpected feeling of agape, the unrelenting determination to see beauty. All of these are available to you now, right now. You see, you stand now in every frequency simultaneously. Your focus on love pulls you along and away from polarity. 
your focus on fear or, quote, not love, roots you here in 3D. It is not necessary to hate. It is necessary to love. Notice those moments when love emerges and watch them multiply. The world you desire is defined in your own heart. You are proof of the possibility for a new earth. Feel it. See it. Make it real. You've been chosen just for this task. Tomorrow we'll look at the power you have. I'll see you then. You are the one we've been waiting for. Namaste.